Hey, my Legion. How y'all doing today? I'm late night. Wednesday night. I got videos for Thursday doing now. Uh, one thing that came up on my feed the last month or two was the Benny Hill documentary. And I said, boy, that looks really cool. It's like an hour long. And I finally, finally watched it. Uh, I want to talk about my personal history with Benny Hill, but I knew absolutely nothing about Benny Hill outside of the show. And one or two other things I'm going to talk about my personal history. Um, it's a BBC documentary made back in 2002. Or two, I think there's two copies of it. Living Fabulously Benny Hill on YouTube. And it goes through the talking to his like co-stars and stuff like that. About him and his rise to fame. His incredibly frugal parents. And that's probably why he was frugal. You know he had a ton of money. And like his very strict father, um, he started out, you know, you know, working at some different place, but then he wanted to be a comedian and it didn't work out very well for him. And then like a few years, uh, a while later, he started writing scripts for television, which just started out, I mean, this is back in the 50s, like sketches and stuff. And then he sent this guy and he said, uh, why don't you, you want to look through some scripts I wrote and stuff like that? And whenever I, you can shuffle and I'll say, just pick one and I'll just give you one and you tell them what to think. And he like, then he says, well, I don't know who we're going to get to, to, uh, do the, to read for the, to be on TV, to do the skit and stuff like that. And he said, well, I just, I'm just a writer. And the guy said, well, why don't you try it? And then that launched his career, the Benny Hill show started out and then, uh, it became a worldwide phenomenon, and like a year or two later, it became like national comedic uh, television personality in a month or something like that. Anyways, it said like it got a uh, part where he left theater as a comedian in shame, and then like three years later, he got promoted as a comedic icon, for at least for that year. On British TV, I didn't know he was doing stuff that long, uh, that back in the fifties and stuff. The black and white stuff—they showed a lot of black and white stuff, which was really cool. Um, how I found about him, this is my personal history, and I'll go back to the. I guess that he signed. Um, he never really wanted to sign a contract with Thames uh, that would syndicate his show all worldwide, including America and stuff. He didn't really want to do it, and I mean, and then. Uh, he did it, and he was making a ton of money. And then uh, he would live, like, very simply. He had, like, rent an apartment. And then you have, like, you know, a bedroom. And then he have, like, a like a couch. Two or three pieces of furniture and a TV and maybe a VCR, maybe. And that was it. And he was very frugal and stuff like that. And they were saying, like, he, he liked to walk a lot and then uh, to get off the pudding. What he said he couldn't gain weight. And then they said he'd walk like six miles. And I said, boy, I lost a lot of weight. And then he eat like four Mars bars and gain it all back. It's a fascinating history because I didn't know anything about Benny Hill aside from that. Uh, oh, there it goes. Now, well, I, I'll talk about my history. I'll inter interject. In the 80s, that's when I found out about him. I remember, I think in the late 70s and stuff, I started seeing all these commercials, someone named Benny Hill. I think my grandmother, they had like that Channel 43, the Cleveland stage, where I really liked. And, uh, I don't think Grandpa ever watched the show. And my uncle, Uncle Wayne, said that you guys are going to watch Benny Hill. That's the funniest damn show I've ever seen in my life. And it's weird because British Humor, and he hated Monty Python. He was the one that said, don't ever let your kids watch Monty Python. We finally did. Watch Holy Grail on Canadian TV. It was really funny. And we went to look at all the money. That's, this is all PG rated. Why was he saying it made it look like Monty Python was the filthiest thing around? <clears throat> I know they had some R-rated movies later on, but Monty Python's awesome too. But no, he was talking about Benny Hill. And I always wanted to see it. took forever for it to get Benny Hill. Like in the early 80s, the ABC affiliate, uh, Channel 24, got it. And I actually loved the show. It was really, really funny. Dad loved it. Uh, the ultimate Saturday night, and it wasn't Saturday Night Live now. It was uh, 11 o'clock local news, followed by Benny Hill, and at midnight, the late great horror show. I'm sure John remembers that too. Hosted by Jim Cook. 
And that's back when TV stations usually signed off after a while. Benny Hill was hilarious. I mean, it was, it, some of the humor was real raunchy. And I remember late, late night, just one night, I'll never forget this. Uh, they used to have, it was weird because there was a time ABC had a show Fridays and then they, they actually re-ran the show in the 80s for a little bit. It would be like, uh, the news, Nightline, and then they have Fridays. And then they they had like an episode of Benny Hill, I remember. And I remember there's a woman out on uh out looking out a window and she was topless. I'll never forget that. And that's a top too. Oh my god, I can't believe it's showing on T V. But uh, someone's gonna get in trouble. I never saw the episode again though. I mean they never showed the episode again. Uh but she was topless. I I'd never forget that. Me and Dad were watching that as a Oh, I guess they screwed up. Uh, but I always thought the show was hilarious. And then, and then the clip of the show was funny. And then I guess um, people started complaining, saying it was sexist. And in British, they said, oh, we allowed to show this kind of smut on our TVs. And they said it was old hat. It wasn't funny anymore. I said, most of them, when they were hired, they had to have their clothes taken off somewhat, you know. And they were saying it's sexist and stuff. And then I guess the guy... Uh, the guy in charge of Thames, because he lived really close to the studio. Like a, maybe a 10-minute walk or something like that to the studio. They called him in. They want to talk about renewing the contract. And uh, yeah, I guess they didn't renew it. I mean, they let it run out, and then that was it. And then he just uh, took to drinking, and all this other stuff. He passed away from a heart attack in 92. Um, one other thing about... When Benny Hill wasn't around anymore, in the 80s, they stopped showing it. They just abruptly stopped. Um, the only other thing I saw him in was he was in that Genesis uh, music video, Anything She Does, when he played a security guard. And, I mean, he was all right in that. Um, he was all right. I mean, Gen I, I don't mind Genesis, but I think Land of Confusion is their, their best video. And definitely probably the best music video ever made. That's the last time I really saw him. And then, um, like I said, I didn't know anything about him aside. The show was really funny. And then uh, I know Johnny Carson, uh, they asked, uh, people always ask me, he said, what guests do you wish you could interview? And he said, Benny Hill. And he said, I guess he doesn't do interviews. He was interviewed somewhat in the documentary, but he was, he was like past since 10 years since that happened. But they talked a lot of his co-stars and stuff. And if you remember the show, you probably remember them too. Um, yeah, but he said that, he, uh, he always wanted to interview him, but he said he doesn't do interviews. I guess in 91, somebody that came to America, in New York, he was like mobbed by people. And this is long enough to show stop running. I mean, at least I, I stopped seeing it. They don't broadcast anymore. I know, uh, Thorny and I had a bunch of videos called Best of Benny Hill. My roommate said, those suck, they're not any good. I remember when I was in Fort Bragg. Before leaving, I made, I rented a bunch of videos and made copies and stuff. And then there was, I think I rented one or two of them. There was a whole bunch of them. And they were still pretty good. I liked them. I, I don't have a problem. I was still laughing at the humor in, the, in the, the documentary. It's still great. You know, I loved the Benny Hill. I just didn't know anything about him. I'm glad I know something about him now. Um, somewhat reminiscent of, in the 90s, uh, on PBS, we had Red Green, a Canadian show. And uh, that was on for a long time. And then it was like, it used to be all weeknights. And then I think it just had it like once on Saturday nights. And then sometime he'd host like the PBS auction and stuff. And then the show eventually, well, it didn't rerun. Then eventually they stopped showing it. But they had an episode where they, uh, they had like an hour or hour and a half long episode talking about his life story. I saw it twice. And it was really interesting. So I got to know about him some too. It's cool. I mean, you get to know about someone you never knew anything about before, you know. And I'm glad I saw it. So I give the Benny Hill documentary a 10 out of 10. It's really interesting and fascinating. Definitely, uh, if you were a fan of Benny Hill's, definitely check it out. It's really good. I mean, I wouldn't give any, but that's what happened. He got let go, you know. But it's a fascinating documentary. You get to learn a lot about him. I didn't know anything about him aside from that, the Genesis video, and then what Johnny Carson said about him. That was it. So hope you liked this video, everybody. Till next time, please. Take care, my legion.